Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Your host, Avi Meyer, and the greatest cameraman of all, Sonny Hirsch. Hi, I'm Sonny Hirsch, a resident of the 50th Ward. For integrity, honesty, and experience, re-elect Alderman Bernie Stone. Hi, thank you. No, that was not Marty Levinson, guys. I'm sorry. No, Marty, I wasn't at Marty today, but thanks, Marty. We didn't do the usual opening. It's before the election, and... Um, Sonny Hirsch, who doesn't want to distinguish himself by talking about his high-ranking roles as, as a leader in the community and all the other things, and he wasn't talking as the uh, chairman of the CAPS Advisory Board, like the 2411 crowd are mixing politics with, uh, with the election. But, uh, you know, here's somebody who's had to seriously work with the community and, and has to and understands um, the value of, of our aldermen, and that's something I agree with. I don't want to. I want to put the show in the proper context because, frankly, I interviewed. I offered to interview each candidate twice. Um, the first time around, I got nobody. Only Brewers people were polite enough to give me a "we can't make it." The second time around, FTAP scheduled and canceled, um, and I had Nazy Dollar and Greg Brewer on. That was a couple weeks ago, and. Um, I listened to them. I also went to the forum that actually was last night over at Boone School, and I've looked at the blogs and the campaigns. And by the way, I was going to start a blog, and I can't stand the stuff I'm reading on the blogs. Oh, and by the way, to those of you who are doing blogs, um, you are doing something in public. And I, I, I kind of actually I don't mind it when you smear me. That's fine, but at least be truthful when you smear me. Uh, I did make sure that my lawyer has all the proper materials, and I'm told. It, this is actionably uh, actionable libel, so at least tell the truth if you're going to say nasty things about me. Can you at least do that, please? So that I would appreciate very much. In the meantime, I am going to make it really clear. Now, I'm not, this is not, you know, I label things clearly. And by the way, I may be starting my own blog, which we'll put on our own website, we'll announce. Um, the actual name is Avi Meyer's 50th Ward Election Blog, uh, .blogspot.com, except after reading all these other blogs, it just dulls my brain. I'm not sure I should do it or not. But I'm thinking maybe there should be some factual information on some blog somewhere. In any event, who I am endorsing, who I am supporting, okay, and we're also going to have like an online Jewish Chicago non-commercial. The blog is also non-commercial. And this show is non-commercial. Um, I am strongly supporting our present alderman, who I hope gets at least two or three more terms, um, minimum. I want him to beat Vito Marzullo's record. And, you know, after seeing, after seeing this crew in action, I'm just not impressed. Not even a little bit. Uh, I'm, okay. And anyway, at this point, I want to introduce you to, as far as I'm concerned, so far and away the best alderman we could possibly have around here, Alderman Bernard Stone. How are you? Thanks, Avi. Thank you for your endorsement. And I want to thank Sonny for the kind words that he said. And, uh, <laughs> Thank, thanks for everything, and thanks uh, for being as kind as you have been to me. And uh, I want to thank all the people who have been so supportive of me. And oh, the people have been very nice to me. And uh, this has not been a very pleasant campaign, quite frankly. It's not that it's a hard campaign. It's that it, it probably is one of the dirtiest campaign I've ever been involved in. And... Uh, it, you know, uh, it's a campaign where, where I've been the only one talking issues and everybody else has been talking about my age, about my family, uh, about, uh, frankly, quite, uh, quite frankly, about lies. Uh, they talk about how I'm not available, uh, how uh, my office doesn't service uh, people, all of which are, not, are just not true. Uh, I'm in my office every Monday and Thursday evening. That they they failed to mention. Oh yeah, they they were there was a big demand that they, that the last night is yeah. uh, evening hours. And, and by the way, a staff that's there 40 hours a week. Now, don't you have more than 40 hours of? Of uh, course, Alex is in the office every morning at eight o'clock. Sometimes he's there at 7:30. Uh, 
Uh, Arlene is there till at least uh, 4.30 every afternoon. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, and Monday and Thursday evenings. Yeah, and, and I'm there every Monday and Thursday. Uh, and and they're, they're, uh, Alan is there usually at 6 o'clock, and I get there at 6.30, and we stay as long as there's people there waiting to see me. So it's ridiculous. And, so and uh, they say we don't service service the people. We say, we we have one of the, the best staffs of any alderman in, in the city. Uh, I don't know any other alderman who who's in his office two nights a week. Most aldermen are in their office at least one night a week, but I'm in my office two nights a week. The only thing that can take me if there's a special event or some, or if it's it, it falls on a holiday like Thanksgiving, of course we're not in there. Uh, but it's ridiculous. The statements they're making are ridiculous. Uh, they're going to do everything better than I do. it. Well, that's great. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. But tell me how you're going to do it better than I am. Uh, they're going to make education better. That's great. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I've been working on, and finally we're getting a new school built. It's not fast enough. Can you do it faster? We didn't get the money from the state. Tell me where, where they would get the money from. We got it from the TIF. <laughs> Greg Brewer came in and worked against the TIF. That's right. So where was he going to get the money to build a new school? He's going to get a better education. They're going to form committees. Did anybody ever build a statue to a committee? What does committees do? Committees generally just... The only thing a committee does is set a, a time for the next meeting. They're going to meet that. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, if you want to get things done, you just got to go out and do them. And you got to plan for things. Uh, they criticize uh, the, 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 uh, the new garage we're building on, on Devon and Rockwell. You know, where, where are the cars going to park? Uh, they don't say, hey, give an answer. In addition to the garage of Devon and Rockwell, there's, there's a new uh, garage going to be built uh, for the new shopping center at uh, Rosemont and Western. Uh, that, that they don't know about. Uh, I, I've got a group criticizing me because I didn't put a bridge across the river for the bicycle uh, run. What they don't know about, and the, the engineers never bothered to contact me, is that th there was a senior citizen building going to be build, built over there. Where was the bridge going to go? In the middle of the senior citizen <laughs> building? I mean, if, 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 if my own city engineers don't contact me and don't know about the senior citizen building, and Nazy Dolor is having a fundraiser for herself running for alderman because I didn't build a bridge. First of all, if the engineers had any brains, they never would have had the, the tunnel built on the east side of the channel. They would have built it on the west side of the channel where the bicycle path runs right straight up to the Devon and then they could cross over to Lincolnwood. Now, last March, I met with the governor because the corner of McCormick and, and, uh, and Devon is an IDOT corner. And I met with the governor for the purpose of building a tunnel under Devon. I th we discussed it here on the year program, right, as a matter of correct. fact. And the reason we met is so the tunnel would, would connect the Chicago bike path to the Lincolnwood path. And uh, so far, I haven't heard from the governor. These things don't happen overnight. There's, there's millions of dollars involved in these things. And uh, IDOT hasn't gotten back to us yet. But eventually, this will be done. And, uh, you know, they don't know about these things. How many years did it take us, uh, Senator Silverstein and I, to get that bridge replaced over Lincoln Avenue? These things don't happen overnight. They criticize this. They criticize that. It took too long. Yeah, it takes time. Uh, it does take time. By the but, way, one of the, as long as you're on the subject of, of things people don't get right, I'd like to bring up a couple of points. That, that first of all, I, I've been reading about and seeing all these guys talk about how they show up at the CAPS meetings. Now, two-thirds of the CAPS district leaders in, in West Rogers Park are right here now, Sonny Hirsch and myself. Okay. Now, uh, Sonny and I were talking about... Now, by the way, it's possible that at some point maybe somebody showed up we didn't know, but none of them are regulars. That's number one. But we do know who all these people are since November. Now, November, December, January, February, four months. 
in those four months. Okay, Sonny, who is 2413, Peterson to Devon, Kedzie to Ridge. Have any of these four people showed up at a CAPS meeting? No. Oh, by the way, let's, let's, now, me, have any no. of these people showed up at 2412? Right. The Brewer answer did is show no. Up to, to get signatures, but he never came to the meeting. Right. So what Sonny's saying, and I saw him there too, that's the first time I met Greg Brewer, is at the November meeting that was at Emerson, not Emerson Park, Emerson Park? Yes. Okay, uh, Greg Brewer was outside getting petitions signed, but didn't go inside for the meeting. So none of these people, not Brewer, not AFTAB, not Dolar, has shown up. It's a lot more like that. And I'd also like to point out that um, for all the people talking about the horrible problems with crime in the area, it, first of all, these people didn't even bother to give a phone number. It, it, none of these people bothered to plug a single CAPS meeting. None of them gave the locations of it. Nobody gave the number of the neighborhood relations office. Nobody brought flyers or whatever to boost the CAPS meetings. None of them show up at any CAPS meetings. Uh, not to mention the fact that the horrible rise in crime. The statistics, the police statistics for crime over the last year show a minor decrease in crime in this area. Okay, not major, major, but a little over 1%, which actually results in dozens of people not being not being burglarized or assaulted or having their windows broken or whatever. So, so, I mean, a lot of this stuff just plain isn't true. And I'm really getting tired of, of, of these people time and time again, just not even coming close to the truth, not being specific on issues. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, everything you say is true. And, and that the worst part of it, well, you know, as far as crime is concerned, if you're a victim of a crime, yeah, it's, crime is terrible. I, I understand that, uh, and we don't like to see crime at all. But we're, we're doing something about crime. I've asked for two, two cameras to be installed on Devon. I've asked for a ca and I did this long before the campaign started. I asked for a camera to be installed at Devon and Bell, and the camera to be installed at Devon and Rockwell. Devon and Bell is the site of, of gang problems and, and drug problems. And I've asked for a camera to be installed there. Uh, I've asked for a camera to be installed at Devon and Rockwell because I view that as potentially uh, a site for future problems. By the way, when I, I did bring that up, you gave us the scoop that, that was on the air last week. Yeah. I did bring that up in my cast meeting, and people were very pleased with that, by the way. Yeah, well, because it makes sense. Uh, oh, but, and by the way, if any of those candidates had shown up at a CAPS meeting, they'd know about it. Well, <laughs> first of all, Showing, you know, I, anytime uh, the CAPS group has asked me to show up, I show up. Yeah, we asked I you don't, one, yeah. I don't believe in, in political influence in, in matters like CAPS. Uh, as you know, I was one of the people who helped CAPS get started. That's right. This was the, one of the very first pilot districts for we CAPS. We were one of the five pilot districts for CAPS, and the reason for it is Joe Moore and myself were two of the, the people who, who insisted on the CAPS program. And, and also, by the way, and um, I know that, that com present, our present commander, Ratner, Ratner uh, when he was the community policing uh, sergeant. He, he was the sergeant at you, that time. You've always had a close relationship, and, you, and not, not just with him, but with the commanders also. You've always been in touch with these people. And I know that from my 11 or 12 years as a uh, civilian beat facilitator and a member of the uh, District Advisory Committee. Well, Neil Hardigan was the former committeeman of the 49th Ward, and it was Neil Hardigan and I who, who, who actually created the 24th District. And I still have a treasured picture of the two of us, along with the original Richard J. Daly, uh, of us digging the digging uh, the ground for the groundbreaking for the 24th district building, uh, and the building was completed in '77 and the station was open. It was in February, if I remember correctly, of '77 uh, that the 24th district was open. So you know, I I I I've been around here a few years, yes, and you know, I am I am a senior citizen. I I, I plead guilty. <laughs> uh, uh, my wheels don't work as fast as they used to work, but the brain is still going good. And that's pretty evident by uh, by the show, and we, we talk usually a half an hour, and it's nonstop. Now, I, I'd like to discuss, if I may, the question that they raised at, at your meeting of why I don't show up at at these uh, oh, the uh, debates. debates. We, we met with the other candidates. We made an offer. 
uh, to meet in the bait. We have made an offer to meet in the bait with each and every one of the candidates uh, directly on a one-on-one -on -one debate. And we would meet with them one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. They rejected that. Now, you're talking it, about the Rogers Park Community Organization. With, with not only with them, with the mm -hmm. West Rogers Park group, with all the groups that had the base. Oh, they had Muslim group. People don't even realize that 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 the one from that Albany, Albany Park. Park. That's a Muslim group, okay. start to finish. But well, that with them, they they picked a date purposely that they knew I was not unavailable. So that that is that's not even discussed to be discussed. And people don't even realize their their low cost housing uh, agenda for this yeah, war. Well, that was their only agenda. But in any event, we made this we made this offer to them. It was more, mainly with the West Rogers Park group. They turned it down. Uh, they they you know in the boxing ring when the champ fights he doesn't fight all all three challengers at one time. Right. Otherwise, you know, the three of them come in and they, they would beat the hell out of the, the, the champ because it's three against one. He fights each challenger and then he meets the next challenger and then the next challenger. He doesn't fight all three at one time. I don't want to be a pinata where they're all going to hit me with a stick. And <laughs> uh, You know, I offered to meet each and every one of them sing, singly. If they wanted to meet me even on the same evening, I'd meet them separately with a little break in between. But I was ready to meet them individually. They done, they're afraid to meet me individually. I still offer to meet them any time, any place, any, 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 anywhere. But they're not, they're not willing to meet me on an individual basis. They're afraid to meet me on an individual basis. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, they have no plan. They have, they, uh, they offer no ideas. Uh, so why would they want to meet me on an individual basis? Uh, Brewer didn't even want to get involved in the debate that the West Rogers Park Community Organization No, had. he refused to be in that debate. Initially, he got shamed into it, but the fact of the matter is that, that he, that, you know, he's not that good a talker. A Nazi Dollar, who doesn't have a lot of substance, is a much better talker than, than he is. She just has no substance. He doesn't have a lot of substance himself. Oh, by the way, one other question. Um, so, of course, you're only doing this, so after two years, you're going to resign and wave a magic wand over Mayor Daley, and he's going to appoint Alana as uh, the new Please, older person. that's ridiculous. I've said right from the start that I intend to fulfill my entire term. Uh, listen, did I, did I ask Nazy Dollar to make a pledge that she's not going to make her husband, who's a Chicago police officer, a sergeant? Is, is she going to wave a magic wand and make her husband a sergeant? Why, why would they assume that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to resign and make my daughter uh, the alderman? I have no intention of resigning. I intend to remain as alderman. Why would they, anybody ever assume that I intend to resign? I'm running for alderman. I intend to be alderman. I said so right from the start, and that's it. Why, why do I have to continually say that they said that? Eight years ago, they said it four years ago, and they're saying it again now. Well, since they don't want to bring up any issues, they got to bring up something. <laughs> yeah, and, and they, they, in addition to which, I have faced, I have, I have faced all sorts of anti-Semitic statements during this campaign. I have faced other types of innuendos and, and other things during this campaign, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, of uh, charges of corruption. I'm tired of... No, no basis in fact. I'm tired of all of this, and I, I have waged a campaign on issues. I, every piece of literature I've passed out talks about myself, talks about what I've planned, talks about what I've done. Not, had, there's not one word about my opponents, and yet all they talk about is my age, my, my children, uh, my family, and they talk about all kinds of generalizations, and I'm sick and tired of these these uh, allegations and innuendos, and I'm sick and tired of of all kinds of statements uh, that are untrue. I'm sick and tired of a union that has no that is desperate and has has no basis in fact for the statements they're making over the telephone. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take this. Uh, quite frankly, crap anymore. And I don't blame you. And, and let me just say, because first of all, he's, Alderman Stone has a solid record of accomplishment and achievement. 
um, that's beyond question. Uh, by the way, you know, to, to give you an idea of how far these people stretch, and we're going to have to close up here because we want to leave time for Terry O'Brien to say nice things about you. Uh, also, by the way, Jim Nelly was going to come here and also talk about how much he's for you, but he's got to take care of his dad right now. We had an infection, which, thank God, hopefully by the time this airs, hopefully he'll be out of the hospital by then. And um, But one of the people was saying, oh, I'll talk to Gary Chico about education. Well, Gary Chico's endorsing you. Not, not, <laughs> not only is he endorsing me, but his, his brother, Craig, uh, is, who's the head of the uh, Mexican-American businessman, has already uh, sent me a letter uh, with the endorsement of the Mexican-American businessman. Yeah, the, the fact of the matter, you know, this, people are talking ridiculous things. And, you know, first of all, don't, don't forget to watch next week. Check our website because there'll be more news, more action. There'll be a lot of action going on in this campaign. Um, and at this point, you know, like, I'm, I'm voting for Alderman Stone, and um, you should Thank too. You. As a matter of fact, if you don't, you, you, you're really doing this neighborhood about the worst thing you can possibly do. Thank you so much. Thank, and Thank um, you, you uh, Alvy. Vote for Alderman Stone. Do it.